Hello students. As we learned about the Lewis concept, but the Lewis concept is unable to explain the shape of molecules. It is only gives an idea that how many bond pairs and lone pairs are there, but it does not give an idea about the shape of molecule. So, the theory that is V S E P R theory. provides a simple procedure to predict the shape of covalent molecules so we need to discuss this theory first of all what do you mean by v s e p r that is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory so in order to understand this theory first of all let us go into the main postulates so simultaneously we'll be discussing these postulates one by one with example here the first postulate the shape of a molecule depends upon the number of valence shell electron pairs around the central atom that is most important here first the shape of a molecule is only depending upon here according to this theory it depends upon the electron pairs electron pairs that is bonded or non bonded around the central atom that is important here the number of electrons of central atom that is a valence shell electron pair of the central atom is important here let us take one example water in water which is the central atom oxygen is a central atom in oxygen when you check here around the oxygen atom in the water molecule how many electron pairs are there when you check this one how many electron pairs are there in this that i will mark the first the central atom now look at around this one how many number of electron pairs are there that is there are two lone pair and there are two bond pairs bond pair means the electron pair which is actually which is parting which is taking part in the bond formation that is called as bonded electron pairs or bonding electron pairs and the electron pair which is not taking part in the bond formation that is called as lone pairs or non bonded electron pairs so in the structure there are two bond pairs and two lone pairs in short i am using bp for bond pair and lp for lone pair so that means the shape of the water molecule depends upon these bond pairs and lone pairs next postulate pairs of electron in the valence shell repel one another since their electron clouds are negatively charged so the second postulate says that these electron pairs that is bonded pairs and the non bonded pairs they will repel each other why they repel each other because these are negatively charged electron pairs are negatively charged so this pair this pair will repel each other similarly the lone pair lone pair repel each other that is this lone pair lone pair repel each other lone pair bond pair repel each other and bond pair bond pair repel each other so that is the second postulate that is pairs of electron in the valence shell repel one another because since their electron clouds are negatively charged the next postulate these pairs of electron tend to occupy such position in the space that minimize the repulsion and thus maximize the distance between them since in the second postulate we have discussed that there is a repulsion between the pairs of electron that is bonded pairs and non bonded pairs repel each other so in order to avoid such a uh, repulsion they always try to minimize the repulsion so that means these pairs are arranged in such a way that they will get minimum repulsion and minimum repulsion is only possible when there is a maximum distance between them 
so let i'm making a structure here here this is the central atom let and these are the two terminal atom so there is two these are the bond between them that is bonded pair now in this way when make we make the structure in this way in this you can find out these two are closer so definitely what happen there will be a repulsion so when there is a repulsion here they will ripple so little bit distance is greater again greater so when you find here the maximum distance that is this distance that is the pair of electron are occupying such a position in the space in order to minimize the repulsion now in this way the repulsion is minimum because the distance between the two pairs is maximum now so now you'll be thinking there is if we make more than 180 degree angle like this then in this case uh, the repulsion will be minimum no why because this angle is now greater but what about this angle now this angle is low so again this and this will ripple in this direction like this so the best way that is uh, the only in this angle they have the maximum distance between them when there is two bond pairs this is for the case of two bond pairs when there is two bond pair so 180 degree angle is the maximum angle where the minimum repulsion is there so this is the postulate says these pairs of electron tend to occupy such a position in the space that minimize the repulsion and thus maximize the distance between them next postulate a multiple bond is treated as if it is a single electron pair and the two or three electron pairs of multiple bonds are treated as a single super pair what this postulate says that if there is a multiple bond like here multiple bond means double or triple so in the case of a multiple bond as we can see here in that case that is taken as a single super pair that means now instead of saying two we can say one here that is double bond can be taken as is considered to be one pair not two pairs and similarly triple bond means actually three pair of electrons are there but that is considered to be single here that is a postulate this says that a multiple bond is treated as a, if it is a single electron pair the two or three electron pairs of a multiple bond is treated as single super pair let us take the case of a, a molecule in which there is bond pair and as well as lone pair like ammonia in the case of ammonia there is one lone pair lone pair usually represented in this way so here there is one lone pair and there are three bond pairs so this is the lone pair and there are three bond pairs so as according to the postulate these pairs of electron ripple each other that means there is a repulsion between the lone pair and bond pair and bond pair and bond pair so here the repulsion is between lone pair and bond pair and the repulsion between bond bond repulsion that is bond pair bond pair repulsion lone pair bond pair repulsion so there are two type of repulsion here that is lone pair bond pair repulsion and bond pair bond pair repulsion but in the structure where there is two lone pairs or more than two lone pairs in that case there is lone pair lone pair repulsion also so the repulsion get varies like this bond pair bond pair repulsion is less than lone pair bond pair repulsion which is less than lone pair lone pair repulsion that is shown here lone pair lone pair repulsion that means the repulsion between the two lone pairs that is called as lone pair lone pair repulsion 
repulsion between a lone pair and bond pair is called as lone pair bond pair repulsion and the repulsion between the two bond pairs are called as bond pair bond pair repulsion and uh, the studies have uh, done according to that studies it was clear that lone pair lone pair repulsion is more than lone pair bond pair which is more than bond pair bond pair so where there is a minimum repulsion that is a repulsion between the two bond pairs and where there is a maximum repulsion that is a repulsion between the two lone pairs so that means uh, when you look at the structure of ammonia here lone pair and bond pair repulsion is greater repulsion but bond pair bond pair repulsion is smaller repulsion since here there is only one lone pair so we can say that in this structure lone pair lone pair repulsion is not there only bond pair bond pair and lone pair bond pair repulsion is there and according to this which is greater this is greater that is lone pair bond pair repulsion is greater so it is one of the most important concept here in order to predict the shape of the molecule so these are the postulates of um, VSEPR theory that is valential electron pair repulsion theory now let us um, make the structure for the atom if it is triatomic um, atom here these are the shape of molecules in which the central atom has no lone pair so that is this is triatomic molecule triatomic means here there are three atoms each circle represent atom here there are three atom where the blue color which is mentioned that is actually central atom and these are the two terminal atom so in the case of triatomic molecule here their shape is linear this is called as linear shape the angle the maximum angle here it is 180 degree in the case of tetraatomic this is tetraatomic it's the second one one central and three terminal that is tetraatomic total four atoms are there in this case the maximum angle is 120 degree angle but in the case of that is 1 2 3 4 5 atoms are there and one central atom and around to this four terminal atoms are there these four terminal atoms are arranged three dimensionally so the angle between them is 109.5 degree the next structure when there are five terminal atoms and one central atom in that case how these will be arranged that is three are arranged in one plane three terminal atoms and this one central atom is in one plane and one of the electron pair that is the one of the terminal atom is above the plane and the other one is below the plane so look at here so the the three atoms that is three terminal atom and one central atom is on the same plane and one is above the plane the other one is below the plane so there are total how many terminal atoms here five terminal atoms so let i am giving number to the structure as 2 3 4 5 why i am giving two here first structure two terminal atom number 2 here 3 here 4 here 5 so i am giving number 2 3 4 5 but here the number 2 3 4 5 i am not giving on the basis of the number of terminal atom here that is actually the total number of pairs consider here as total number of electron pair i am giving the number first structure Two here, three, four, five. So it is the easiest way I am giving to you to predict a structure. First, you learn these four structure, and the two number you need to remember whenever number two comes, that is for this structure, for three, the structure, for four, this, and for five, this structure. 
so once you have learned the structure and their geometry that is first one linear that is a uh, here this one is trigonal planar why it is trigonal like a tri three trigonal planar next is tetrahedral tetra forward tetrahedral trigonal bipyramid that is number five so once you have learned this number this geometry name and the structure we can easily make the lewis on the basis of lewis structure we can easily predict the shape of the molecule so let us take some examples first example becl2 we need to make the shape or the geometry for this molecule so first you need to make a, a lewis structure for this one like this this is a lewis structure for becl2 as we have learned this is an exception of a octet rule so here i am writing molecule that is becl2 bplp total pair bp represent bond pairs that means the number of bond pairs number of bond pairs simple words that is a number of bond lp lone pairs that is i am representing lp and total pair that is sum of the bp and lp that give rise to that is total pair so always try to do in this way it will be very easier now look at the structure lewis structure here which is the central atom beryllium is the central atom so only we are considering the electron pairs that is bonded and non bonded electron pair for the central atom be now look at the structure lewis structure in this we can say that uh, there are how many bond pairs and lone pair look at around the beryllium here here two bonds are there but there is no lone pair here because there is no dots around to the beryllium so we can say that there is two bond pair and zero lone pair here there is no lone pair so what i can write 2 bp and 0 lp now make the sum of this so we'll be getting 2 plus 0 is equal to 2 so what is the total number of pair here that is 2 so already i told you remember the number shape and the geometry for the molecule in the table so look at here what is the number 2 the number 2 is here so what is the geometry that is linear geometry so this is actually what we need to make for the case of becl2 so because in this becl2 we are getting the total pair equal to 2 so its structure is actually linear like this and the angle between the here it is 180 degree angle so here there is a, this is one cl this is one cl that is a terminal atom and the central atom here that is beryllium so if you want in the structure you can write beryllium here and chlorine and chlorine like this so this is the structure that is a becl2 have linear structure so how we have find out uh, by using this method since in order to make three dimensional structure it's quite difficult so for our convenience we'll make the structures in this way that is first structure is linear we have given number 2 second structure trigonal planar we have given number 3 for it third structure that is tetrahedral the number 4 is given next is trigonal bipyramidal number 5 octahedral which is given number 6 pentagonal bipyramidal that is 7 octahedral in this total 6 terminal atoms are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 terminals and there is one central atom so that is octahedral here in the octahedral geometry the four terminals are on the same plane and one is above the plane the other one is below the plane so the angle between these is 
each bond angle is 90 degree angle. In pentagonal bipyramid, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 terminals are arranged pentagonally that is on the same plane and the central atom also. So the 5 terminal and the one central atom is on the same plane, one is below the plane, the other one is above the plane, the other one is below the plane. So total 7. So when you look at this one, it is not difficult to learn the number with structure because for the first case, number 2, how it comes number 2? Because in the first structure, that is a linear structure, when you count here, there are two terminal part. So number 2. In the second structure, that is trigonal planar, look at here in the structure, how many terminals are there? 1, 2, 3. 3 terminals are there. So therefore, the number 3 comes like this. For tetrahedral, we are only counting the terminals here, not the central one. So when you count in the tetrahedral terminal, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why the number 4. Similarly, for trigonal bipyramid, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's why the number 5 comes like this. For octahedral terminal part, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is in arranged in a square form. And one is above the plane. The other one is below the plane. So total 6. That's why 6 comes here. For pentagonal bipyramid, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 atoms are on the term. That is a terminal. Terminal side that is forming a pentagon. And one is above the plane. The other one is below. So total 7. So first you learn the structure. And the number and the name which is given here. So once you have learned the structure, name and the number, you can easily form the structure for any of the example. So now let us take uh, some example, other example like BF3. BF3, first of all central atom and these are the terminal atoms. Make the Lewis structure as shown here, the Lewis structure. Find out the number of bond pair. 1, 2, 3 bond. So bond pair is 3. Because around the central atom there is no lone pair. So it is 0. So total is equal to 3. So when the total pair is equal to bond pair is equal to 3. At the time look at the chart in this 3. 3 means we need to make the structure. That is trigonal planar. So we will be making the trigonal planar structure. Clear how we have made the trigonal planar structure? Because we got number 3 here. So 3 terminals. Now here in this case because the 3 terminal atoms are here that is the 3 fluorine. So we will be keeping 1 F here, 1 F here. So these 3 terminal atoms we are keeping and which one is the central atom here that is B. So in the place of A I can write B. So this is the structure for BF3 and what we name the structure that is trigonal planar structure. Let us take the next example methane. The Lewis structure for methane is given here that is CH4. Now when you compare this Lewis structure what is the bond pair here because there are four bonds surrounding to carbon. So bond pair is four because there is no lone pair surrounding to carbon. Therefore the lone pair is equal to zero. That is equal to when we make the sum we will be getting four. So four means what will be the geometry? Look at into the chart number four. Number four means it's tetrahedral. So tetrahedral. So at that time how we need to make a so here we need to make a tetrahedral geometry. So now we will be making tetrahedral geometry. In this the central atom here it is carbon. So I can keep carbon in the place of A and the 4 terminal which is actually 4 hydrogen. So we can keep 4 hydrogen on the 4 terminal side. Now this is the right structure that is tetrahedral structure for methane where the angle 
where the angle is 109.5 degree so that is the tetrahedral geometry for methane three dimensionally how we can represent the structure like this three dimensional structure tetrahedral is a three dimensional structure so we can represent methane in this way where this is the central atom and these are the four terminal atoms next pcl5 pcl5 first we have to make the lewis structure and on the basis of lewis structure find out the bond pair that is 5 because 5 bonds are there surrounding two phosphorus there is no lone pair therefore 0 therefore its sum is equal to 5 so it is equal to 5 so when you look at the chart here here the 5 number is actually the structure trigonal by pyramidal so we have to make trigonal by pyramid that is like this we have to make trigonal by pyramid where a is the central atom that is here it is phosphorus so in the place of a central atom in the place of a we can write the phosphorus here terminal atom there are five chlorine so we will be keeping chlorine on the five terminal portions so that is the structure that is trigonal bipyramidal structure for pcl5 three dimensionally how we can represent the structure like this as i told you the three terminals and one the center one atom these all are in the same plane one is above the plane the other one is below the plane so this one which is above the plane and which is below the plane that is actually called as axial and these are called as equatorial that is represented as eq so the details of this one will be discussing later on next let us discuss for ozone lewis structure for ozone we have already discussed in the previous videos so this is a lewis structure for ozone where the central atom is oxygen there is a multiple bond here that is double bond so according to vs epr theory the multiple bond should be taken as one it should be considered as one that is this is considered as one here and it is considered as one here so total bond pair it is not three here it is equal to two why because the multiple bond here that is a double bond which is considered as one single super single bond and this is already a single so total number of bond pair that is two and since here there is a lone pair when you look at the central atom here there is one lone pair so one lone pair so total we have three so the number total pair is equal to three so just look at into the chart number three number three that is trigonal planar so this chart you have to remember in order to make the structure for all examples so the number three that is trigonal planar so we have to make a trigonal planar first we'll be making the geometry trigonal planar now look at here here o is the central atom so i'm keeping o here in the center and because there are two terminal o so i'm keeping two terminal o now look at here one end one terminal end is remaining what is actually that is actually the lone pair so lone pair will be representing in this way so there are two bond pair and one lone pair so here the lone pair is actually representing here in the form of this so this lone pair is occupying one of the terminal position so that is when we make the structure properly there are two bond and one lone pair two bond pairs and one lone pair if uh, the lone pair is not considered if only the bond pair is considered don't consider the lone pair here so look at here what it shows it look like a v that is called as a v shape its shape is v or we can call it as bend shape so if the lone pair is not considered in that case the shape is actually here that is a bend shape look at here geometry is trigonal planar 
the geometry means in this we are considering the lone pair also but in the shape we are not considering the lone pair so when we are not considering the lone pair so what will be the shape of this one that is a bend shape or we can say v shape but actually there is one lone pair here so this is the trigonal planar geometry the shape is bend shape next ammonia in ammonia the central atom is nitrogen so look at here how many bond pairs three bond pair and one lone pair so that is equal to four so when it is four the geometry is tetrahedral geometry from this tetrahedral geometry the central atom is nitrogen so keep nitrogen here and there are three hydrogen that is on the terminal side so one terminal is remaining this one so that will be actually a lone pair so this one will be a lone pair so this is the structure for ammonia that is n h and one lone pair so you have to make the structure in this way so this is the structure and you have to keep two dots here that represent a lone pair so this is the structure so when we not considering the lone pair here so if we are not considering the lone pair only if you are considering the bond pair like this i am not considering the lone pair only bond pair when you are considering so the shape is actually like a pyramid so we can say that its shape is pyramidal like this like you are aware with the pyramid so the shape of this one is pyramidal but geometry is tetrahedral next water in the case of water because the central atom is o where there are two lone pair and two bond pair so 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 4 means the geometry is tetrahedral so when the geometry is tetrahedral here central atom is o so write o and there are two terminal hydrogen so i am keeping 2h here so what about the two remaining one that will be actually lone pair so lone pair you represent in this way lone pair so this is the lone pair keep the two dots here that represent the lone pair so one dot here two dot here so this is the structure for water so as we have learned that uh, the water have bend shape now you can see here why it have a bend shape because when you look at this one now water is actually a v shape or we can call it as a bend shape why because there are two lone pairs here so tetrahedral geometry it occupies but the shape is actually bend shape so three dimensionally we can represent this in this way bend shape next br f5 central atom is br when we look at the lewis structure here because it is an exception of a octet rule so it have more than 8 electron to the central atom so there are 5 bond therefore i am writing 5 bp here and there is one lone pair look at the br central atom there is one lone pair so i am keeping one here so that is equal to 6 so when it is equal to 6 so the chart which we have already discussed look it into the chart in that chart 6 number goes to octahedral so we have to make an octahedral structure in this way like this so octahedral it follows octahedral geometry now here the central atom is br so keep a br in the center so here you need to write br and 1 2 3 4 4, 4 terminal position is occupied by 4 fluorine it is occupied by 4 fluorine but we have total 5 fluorine so one of the position is also occupied by 5 so like this 5 fluorine is occupying the 5 terminal position now look at the structure one terminal portion is remaining that is actually the lone pair so this is the right structure for brf5 in which five terminal out of five terminal fluorines four are occupying the square position and one is one of the plane that is either above the plane or below the plane 
so this is the geometry that is octahedral but uh, if it is lone pair is not considered then its geometry is octahedral but the shape is actually square pyramidal square pyramid look at the three dimensional structure which is given this is called a square pyramid why it is called a square pyramid because this is a square that means the four terminal atom and one the central atom is on the plane and one of the atom that is this atom is above the plane so we can say that this is structure square pyramid next one that is xef4 xz is a noble gas element so it forms a compound like xef4 it is an exception of octet rule as we have discussed already so let us make the structure for this one in this the total number of bond pair is 4 because you can see around the xenon there are four bonds so bond pair is 4 and look at to the xenon there are two pair of lone pair two lone pairs are there here and here you can check there are two lone pairs so this actually we can write here two lone pairs here so 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 so 6 means we have to make a geometry that is octahedral now from here from octahedral there are four fluorine so four fluorine it occupy the four corners of the square in the octahedral so four fluorine will occupy one here one fluorine here one fluorine here and the fourth one here so the two position that is one is above the plane and below the plane is occupied by the lone pair so this is the right structure for xef4 here why we are keeping the lone pair on the axial position not on the other position because lone pair lone pair repulsion is maximum so the lone pair will try to occupy a position where they get maximum angle so that is here the two lone pairs are getting the maximum angle that is so because of this reason they lone pair should be kept on the one above the plane the other one should be the below plane so that is also important to make a structure so this is the structure that is the geometry is octahedral but when we not consider the lone pair its shape is square planar why because one above the plane the other one below the plane is not we are considering that is lone pair we are not considering so the structure is square shape is square planar so this is all we have discussed a number of examples some of the examples you have to try by yourself that is the example sf6 xz f2 i f7 so all of you try these examples by yourself and make the use of the chart which i told you on the basis of that if using that chart make the use of a lewis structure and find out the geometry and the shape for these molecules so this is all about the vsepr theory that is a quite important theory in order to describe the shape and structure of molecule so this is all about this video have a nice day